I think all three have a chance. The guy that I like the most right now is the guy who is most likely to get to number three. That's Jaden Daniels. If the draft were happening today and I was running a training, I'd take him over Caleb Williams and Drake May. That was Phil Perry back in January, not that long ago, declaring Jaden Daniels as his number one quarterback in this year's draft. But word right now, I'm hearing sorry, is that, well, that's breaking news. Uh, let's bring in Phil Perry along with WEI's Andy Hart because um, we have some quarterback developments. Phil, uh, what is this developing news you have for us? Yeah, I've got a developing take, and the take has developed to the point now where I would say Drake May is the best quarterback prospect Why? in this year's class. Why? And I might even say, Trenny, that Jaden Daniels is the better player right now, but in terms of a quarterback prospect, this might be difficult for somebody like Andy to understand. I'm making eyes. The better player right now doesn't make you the best prospect. The best prospect factors in upside. It factors in ceiling. It factors in development. Drake May's 21 years old. He has the height. He has the athleticism. He has the ability to throw off platform. All of these things, I think, make him a better prospect than Jaden Daniels. If you had to play a game tomorrow, Jaden Daniels might give you the better chance to win. But that's not what the draft is about. The draft is about taking someone that you can build your team around, especially number three overall, especially with this quarterback position. And I start with the physical ability. When you look at the best quarterbacks in today's game, big guys who can throw on the move with rocket arms. And that is the very baseline, very surface level analysis that I can provide right now where I can look at Drake May and say, that guy has it, whereas Jaden Daniels, the counter to this argument that we've been talking about for months, it feels like, is more of an outlier. There ain't many quarterbacks in the NFL who are hovering around 200 pounds that are having a lot of success, long-term success, especially at that position. So for me today, and this is going to maintain, and this is going to About continue next week to or be next month. <laughs> my take, Andy, Andy, till we get to the draft. But to me, Drake May is the better quarterback prospect, and he would be my first choice, not only over Jaden Daniels, but over Caleb Williams as well. Yeah, I don't have a problem seeing it because I think he's Josh Allen. I've used that comp for a while now, and I think Josh Allen is the most physically gifted quarterback in the NFL, and that's where the deviation is with Phil and Jaden Daniels and sort of that difference. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. The most physically gifted quarterback in the NFL, in my mind, is Josh Allen, was John Elway. He's not the most accomplished quarterback. The <coughs> physical tools that Phil just mentioned, the fact that he has the size, the arm strength, the ability to run, and I think that is undersold. I think he's probably going to be a better runner in the National Football League than he was in college. When he was a productive player, he scored touchdowns, he did it when he needed to. I think that's a, a weapon you can lean on even more. But if you're just talking about pure physical tools, he is up there with some of the most physically gifted quarterbacks we've seen. We throw that word around, generational talents. He is physically a generational type guy. Planet player, Phil, I know you like to use that word for the bigger guys, you know, 300 pounds, runs a 4, 7, 40, whatever it may be. For, at the quarterback position, Drake May is that. Now the question is, is he there? We're talking about the guy like he's the second coming of frickin' Josh Allen and John Elway. Why is he the third pick in the draft? Is he going to be there? Well, that's the thing. Now he's on, is, could he be on the upswing again? I was looking at just a couple of mock drafts today, and some have flipped again, where they mm -hmm. have jo uh, Drake May going number two to Washington, Jaden Daniels falling to number three to the Patriots. Okay, Phil uh, is continuing, by the way, his prototypical Patriot series, uh, and I think Drake May falls into that as well. He's looking at what Elliot Wolf might be looking for. So Phil looked at the eight quarterbacks taken in the first or second round by Wolf's mentors. A lot of hits on that list. Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love, Patrick Mahomes, Brett Favre was acquired via trade for a first-round pick. The only bust, Brian Fromm, who I had forgotten about. Uh, he was taken in 2008 in the second round by the Packers. Didn't need him because they had one crazy town Aaron Rodgers on the team. But Drake May, when I read your article today, Phil, he seems to probably fit the bill better than anybody else on your list. He does because of the size. You know, you look at that list. All of those guys are, are six to or taller outside of Baker Mayfield. There's a little bit of a size outlier when it comes to that list right there. 215 or heavier. He checks that box as well. The hand size is enough. And all of those guys, for the most part, maybe Brian Brahm aside, who is a bigger, heavier guy, can throw and throw on the move. They have real arm talent. and They have the ability to extend plays and create plays both with their legs and their arms. 
and I look at May as being maybe the best in this year's class at being able to do those sorts of things. Jaden Daniels is the best pure athlete, and he's the best runner, but in terms of off-platform, different arm angles, being creative, being able to shrug off tacklers at times in the pocket, outside the pocket, and continue to make explosive plays down the field, that to me is Drake May. And again, he needs some refining. He's 21, Jaden Daniels is 23. You're not getting a finished product in Drake May, but with the right development and the right kind of coaching, Andy, which might be a question, a legitimate one for Patriots fans out there, you might end up with a top seven or eight quarterback in the NFL in a couple years. And I want to be clear with Phil and I sort of gushing over the physical tools. This isn't some, remember back in the day, those NBA workouts where a guy would work out against a chair and then he was like, yeah. oh my God, he's so <laughs> athletic, he can do this. And then he's a bust. Why? Because could he play basketball? Drake May has had two good seasons at North Carolina. Even more lately, Trey Lance, I think, was more of a projection based on physical traits and gifts than Drake May. Drake May has been playing a quality level of quarterback for North Carolina through some issues, through some personnel around him, scheme changes, different things, and still producing. So I don't think he's as, I don't think he's as raw as my guy Josh Allen coming out of Wyoming. Like, I think he's a more polished player who, yes, I keep going back to Alex Van Pelt, whoever it may be. All these guys are going to have warts. They're college students for a reason. But the question is, can you take that raw ability? Can you buff it up and get the most out of it? Because if you do that with Drake May, as Phil said, I think you have a top five quarterback. All right. Caleb Williams, speaking of top five quarterback, he's taking part in his USA Pro, USC Pro Day this afternoon. The Patriots, while represented as Sports Illustrated's Albert Breer reporting that Elliot Wolf, offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt, and uh, quarterbacks coach TJ McCartney among those in attendance. Head coach Gerard Mayo not there, but he will join those three along with a bigger Patriots group at Michigan's Pro Day, which is on Friday. Andy Hart, does Elliot Wolf deserve the final call on that number three pick? Um, do you think he'll sort of like, and do you think it'll be, we, we got used to this word around here recently, collaborative? Well, certainly a decision like this, in my opinion, should be collaborative. I think you know, it's, it's franchise altering, it's career altering, it's resume altering. But if there's anybody in the room at Gillette Stadium, in the war room, in the draft room, building up to this draft and this massive pick, Elliot Wolf has the best resume, the best experience. He has worked in multiple organizations. Hell, a little bit like, you know, I know we get into nepotism, good, bad. He, he was talking about having a stopwatch at the combine when he's 10 years old, time in the 40. He grew up in the world of football. He has seen different organizations. He has seen draft picks on quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I mean, if any, and more so than the Crafts. I know people will say Crafts shouldn't be involved. I don't agree with that. To me, when you have a decision with a number three overall pick and a quarterback, the owner should be involved in that. But the football guy, the guy who said he is going to make the final decision, the most qualified guy, that's Elliot Wolf. Yeah, he's a GM caliber person based on his resume. The, the things that he has done in his career would lead him to have general manager types of opportunities, which he's had, he's interviewed for in the past. And so uh, I wouldn't be necessarily all that concerned. I, listen, you're concerned with anybody who's never done a certain job before and all of a sudden they're in the seat and they're doing it. But you see first-year GMs make what look like pretty savvy GM moves on a relatively frequent basis, Nick Casario is still a pretty young GM in Houston. Looks to be going pretty well for him. Another Patriots-related guy, Monty Austin for it. Trades down from the top of the draft, then back up into the draft, all in the same draft to get the offensive tackle that he wanted all along and acquiring draft capital in the process. Like These are things that these guys can do because they've been learning on the job for a while. Elliot Wolf has been doing that, and so I think there should be a fair level of confidence in him.